Hello, today we are going to talk about how to find a rule um, from using a function chart. Um, there's two types of problems that you will be presented with in this situation. They may ask you to find a rule without, um, sorry, with having a zero as an input. As you see here, we have our inputs and our outputs, and the very first input is zero. So there's two steps that we are going to follow. Um, in order to find the rule using the function table. First step is to find what is known as the constant rate of change. Basically, there is a formula for the constant rate of change. What you're going to look for is first the change of the y's, that's the change of the outputs, and you're going to divide that by the change of the x's, in other words, the change of the input. This is also known as the slope. Um, when we're graphing. But first let's get to finding the constant rate of change. First the change of the y's or the outputs. As you go from one output to the next, we have 3, 7, 11, 15. It looks like the pattern would be to increase by 4. Every time you add 4 to the previous output, you get the following output. For example, 19 plus 4 gives me the 23. So my change of y would be 4. And we're going to divide that by the change of the x's. So I'm going to go to the inputs and look for its pattern. We went from 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8. So it looks like each time it's increasing by 2. And we can check it down here. 8 plus 2 is, in fact, 10. So the change of the x's would be 2. Therefore, your constant rate of change, change of y divided by change of x, is 2. And this 2 is what we're going to multiply by every single input. So 2 times x is part of the rule or the function we're trying to find. Step 2 is to find the difference between the 0 input and its output. So you're going to go back to the chart. Now what we're looking for is the input of 0, which is the first one, and its output, which is 3. Obviously, the difference between 3 and 0 is that it increased by 3 or plus 3, because 0 plus 3 is 3. Therefore, the remainder of our rule would be plus 3. So what this means is that if you plug in any of these inputs into this expression, you will get its appropriate output. And you can test a point to see if that uh, works. Now, what if they ask you to find a rule and there is no zero for the um, input? Well, pretty much it's the same process. Step one is in fact the same. You're going to start by finding the constant rate of change. So remember that means your change of y's divided by your change of x. So you go from 5 to 14, that's the difference of 9. 14 to 23 is also a difference of 9. 23 to 32, 9. So it looks like it's increasing by 9. Let's check it one more time. 32 plus 9 is 41. So my change of y, 9. We're going to come to the other side and find the changes, um, or the change, rather, of the x. 1 to 4, looks like they increased by 3. 4 to 7, also increased by 3. 7 to 10 was 3. Test it with the last two. 10 plus 3 is, in fact, 13. So my change of x is 3. In order to get that constant rate of change, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And remember that is what we're going to multiply by the um, inputs. So, so far we have half of our rule, 3 times x. Now, step 2. It's going to sound a little tricky, but really it's not. Um, it says to find the difference of the product of the constant rate of change, which was 3, and an input, and the appropriate output. 
So let me show you what that means, for example. We found that the constant rate of change was, in fact, 3. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick the last one here. X is 13. So what I'm going to do is find the product of the constant rate of change and this input. So in other words, I'm going to come down here and do 3 times the input of 13. Well, 3 times 13 is 39. However, the output must be 41. So we need to find the difference between what the output was supposed to be, 41, and what the product was, which was 39. 41 minus the 39 is 3. I'm sorry. It's not 3, Ms. Jarrett. It is 2. All right? So 41 minus 39 is 2. So therefore, that difference is what we need to add on to get the appropriate output. And again, if you want to pick a random point to pick, like you could pick the 10, plug it in, and see if you, in fact, get 32 to check your rule.